Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm going to do your August the 16th spiritual principle a day in a meditation. The title of that meditation is Our Commitment to Encouragement. As a group, it's our job to be tolerant, listen well, hear the message through the mess, and encourage newer members to grow. That comes from Guiding Principles, Tradition 10, for groups. Practicing encouragement, especially with newer members, is a job not to be taken lightly. Encouragement breeds hope which leads to a willingness to change, which leads to courageous action, which leads to growth that can be miraculous to witness. When we consider the importance of encouragement, we realize policing the message or the messenger is likely not helpful. We all hope to be met with empathy and encouragement, not an explanation about outside issues. We can overlook when a newer, excuse me, we can overlook when a newcomer misspeaks or an old timer, right? <laughs> we can overlook when a newcomer misspeaks. When we're tempted to correct the way someone shared Maybe we offer a hug instead and our phone number. The share that hits the mark of solution oriented. Message caring and utterly authentic. All before the timer goes off. May not happen every day. And is that even our goal? Many of us believe sharing honestly is the solution and actively listening for the message reflects our empathy and encourages others to speak honestly. We can validate each other and also model how to connect the dots between what's happening in our individual lives and the process of recovery we all share. When we provide each other with support and encouragement, we're more inspired to be part of each other's growth. Encouragement is living by example, as much as it is the words we utter. Rather than critique a group member's way of handling a problem, we share our experience with a similar situation. Through it all, we witness each other's courage to endure some unimaginable conflict and strife and stay clean through it. NA members' encouragement has provided the nudge I needed to take one more step forward, a member recounted. I was told not to quit before the miracle. My suggestion is to not quit during or after either. We've all shared a mess at some point. Heck, <laughs> we've all been a mess. But the encouragement I received gave me the courage to learn and grow. I'm committed to doing that for others today. What a beautiful meditation. Let's take a moment of silence, followed by the we version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Being tolerant as a group, listening well, paying attention to the message and not the mess, 
encouraging newer members and older members and everything in between to continue to grow. I find that empathy for me, the ability to sit in a meeting and just be present. And now when people are sharing, I try not to nod my head a lot, right? Even though I'm in agreement and I'm listening, I'm hearing the message, I try not to nod my head a lot because there's times when I may not be nodding my head. It's sort of a, let me take a drink of coffee here. Hold on. Thank you. So I try not to nod my head a lot because there's times when I don't nod it. And people oftentimes will come up to me and say, you are so observative during the meeting. I like how you pay attention to the person that's sharing. One person said to me, when so-and-so was sharing, you stopped nodding your head. Was there a problem? Did you sense something wasn't right? And you know what I told him? I said, actually, I'm not even conscientious that I'm nodding my head or not nodding my head. And I became more aware of how I seem to come across with my nonverbal behaviors. So I intentionally try to sit still and just pay attention. And sometimes without fail, my head would begin to nod. But my problem is, is when it's not nodding. I don't want anyone to ever think while they're sharing, I am judging what they're saying. So if I'm nodding for one person and not nodding when someone else is sharing, there could be that contradiction that could cause conflict, right? Oh, Mighty Stream liked what so-and-so said, but not what so-and-so said. That's never my intention. As you know, what's shared from the heart touches the heart, but also maybe I can't identify with everyone's share and I'm identifying when I'm naughty, but that does not diminish the importance or value of someone else's share. So I am conscientiously just trying to actively listen and be present and be supportive. And that's what we all want to do. That's what we're there to do. It's for us to be able to have a commitment to being encouraging to others and stop like I'm sharing my own personal experience, strength and hope, hope with me naughty. How simple is that? How can someone be offended by some, that, right? It's so innate. It's so natural, but I'm aware of it now. I'm aware of it because someone brought it to my attention years ago. Have I stopped nodding? Absolutely not, but I am very much aware of it. And I try in those meetings not to do that. And just listen. Just listen. Now, that's for me. What about you? How does your commitment to encouragement show up in the meeting? Because you're part of the group. And this is telling that telling us that as a group, it's our job to be tolerant, listen well, hear the message through the mess, and encourage new members or newer members to grow. What are you doing to further that along? Okay, great job. Good. That's amazing. 
I'm glad you're able to identify what you are doing. So now what are you not doing? Or what are you doing that doesn't further that along? Are you a hostile individual when you walk into the meeting? No one would even dare approach you or think to hug you. Are you a busybody in the meetings? So you're not listening. You're just present, talking, whispering, sitting, looking at your phone, thumbing through Reels, TikTok, Facebook, Messenger. Do you need to do that for an hour and a half? I'm not saying disconnect from your other world. Put it on vibrate and put it in your pocket. Me, I'm choosing to leave it in the vehicle now because I know my boys have my husband to turn to during that hour and a half. I don't have to be on call. And I know and trust that my husband knows what to do if there's an emergency and he knows where to find me. He knows exactly where I'm at. That fits my life. But that's not to say that I won't take it into a meeting. Sometimes I don't trust the parking lot that I'm parked in and I'm going to take anything that's valuable in the car with me. So I'm looking at what I'm not doing as much as I'm looking at the good that I am doing. And that's all this is. Is an opportunity this morning or today, wherever you are, to look at your commitment to encouragement. That's all this is. You know, I'm finding myself, the more that there's there's a gentleman that listens to me do the meditations and he wrote that there was such a difference. He could see the growth from the meditations I did same day last year to today. This has been one of the most trying years, beginning in, I would say, April, May of last year, up until now. I have lost so many people close to me, so many people, and I've managed, my GPA has dropped a bit but I've managed to keep it above a 3.5. And I'm talking about working on a master's. This is not light work for me, right? I'm stretching myself far beyond what I thought I would be able to do. The point is, is that we all have something else larger than ourselves to do. Our commitment to encouragement is more to me, in my personal opinion, about the therapeutic value of one addict helping another, being without parallel. There's nothing else that runs alongside of it. I look over and I see another recovering individual and I'm encouraged in a way that no one else can encourage me because I know they understand the gift of desperation. I know that they do. And just to see them Even if I don't hear their message, just to see and to watch them grow encourages me to do the same. So why not do that for someone else? Why not 
be more graceful. And that's what I was saying. I just have found that in this last year, during the most difficult time, I would say in my life in a long time, I'm very much aware of the grace that I've been given. And I'm finding my heart is far more tender. Just in how I express myself even. And every time I do a podcast, I lean into reminding you that we are human beings, not human doings. And it's okay to be who we are and allow ourselves the grace to grow, to improve, to turn off the butt kicking machine and just live a life full of gratitude that we are even alive. Because as you know, some of us actually did overdose and were brought back with Narcan or something else. Some of us did actually have a stroke using and are able to have conversations, walk, move our limbs. Some of us actually lost children to the system and we're still breathing and moving working towards getting our visits. Some of us lost marriages, relationships, and we're still here. Some of us did not get that great job that we thought we were perfect for, and we're still here. And that's what this is about, continuing to grow and being committed to encouraging one another. You know, I hope that you're having a beautiful day already. I know that I am. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow.